video, I'll be showing you how to use the Fleming left hand rule to determine the direction of the force acting on the current carrying conductor um, under the influence of external magnetic field. Before we start, there are some terms that you need to be familiar with. First, we will look at what is external magnetic field. It is the magnetic field due to two permanent magnets shown in this diagram. This and this. Okay, for the second terminology that we'll be using uh, will be the cross dot diagram to represent the direction of the current flow. A cross indicates that the direction is going into the page and a dot indicates that the direction is coming out of the page for the current. We can use the analogy of an arrow to help us remember where, uh, the, the direction of a cross or a dot that it represents. If you see a cross, it if you see a cross, it will represent the back of the arrow. That means it is going into the page. If you see a dot, it represents the front of the arrow. That means it's coming out of the page. Okay, the third terminology that we'll be using will be the Fleming left hand rule. Okay, the thumb will represent the direction of the force, the index finger, the direction of magnetic field, the middle finger, the direction of the current. Now we will show how Fleming left hand rule looks like using an actual left hand. Okay, now we're going to show you the Fleming left hand rule using the actual left hand. The thumb points to the direction of the force. The index finger points to the direction of the magnetic field. The middle finger points to the direction of the current. We will show you five possible scenarios where we can apply Fleming left hand rule. In scenario one, the direction of the current is into the page and the magnetic field line is always pointing from north to south and in this case will be left to right. We will start by considering the index finger that represents the magnetic field. In this case, the magnetic field direction is from left to right so this is how we align our index finger. Okay. Next, we're supposed to align our middle finger to the direction of the current. So in order to do that, we have to, uh, in order to do that without changing the direction of the index finger, we will have to rotate the index finger such that the index finger doesn't, ch doesn't change direction as we are aligning the middle finger. Okay. Since your since the current is going into the page, this is the correct alignment. Now the thumb is pointing downwards. This means the wire will move downward. That means the direction of force, in this case, is downward. In scenario 2, the direction of the current is out of the page. And the magnetic field line is still from the left to the right. Now align the index finger pointing from your left to the right which is the direction of your magnetic field. Next, align the middle finger to the direction to the point out of the paper by rotating your middle finger. Now you can see that the thumb is now pointing upwards this means that the wire will move upward and the direction of the force, in this case, will be upward. In scenario 3, the direction of the current is going into the page and the magnetic field is now from the right to the left. Okay, now we will align the index finger to the direction of the magnetic field. In this case, it will be from the right to the left in this manner. Next, we will align the middle finger to the direction of the current which is pointing into the paper. Okay, as you notice that 
the thumb is pointing upwards. This means that the wire will move upward. The direction of the force will be upward. In scenario 4, the direction of the current is out of the page and the magnetic field direction is still from the right to the left. Now align the index finger to the direction of the magnetic field. In this case, it's from your right to left. Next, align the middle finger to the direction of the current which is pointing out of the paper. Notice that the thumb is now pointing downwards. This means that the wire will move downwards. The direction of the force is downward. Scenario 5 is like a combination of scenario 1 and 2 where the magnetic field direction is from the left to the right. For the coil, we will consider them as separate wire placed in the same magnetic field. Okay, let's focus on, for the wire on the left. Align the index finger to the direction of the magnetic field which is from your left to right. Next, align the middle finger to the direction of the current pointing into the page. Notice that the direction of the force is now downwards. For the wire on the right, align the index finger to the direction of the magnetic field. This case is from the left to the right. Next, align the middle finger to the direction of the current which is pointing out of the page. Notice that the thumb is now pointing upward indicating the direction of the force is upward. The coil will now rotate anti-clockwise as it experiences a turning effect due to the forces acting on both sides of the coil. To recap, the Fleming left hand rule is used to determine the force acting on a current carrying conductor. There must be an external magnetic field. This is Fleming left hand rule, the thumb pointing to the direction of the force, the index finger pointing to the direction of the magnetic field, the middle finger pointing to the direction of the current.